Here to talk to you today about the flat plate. And just like Megan Trainer saying, because it's all about flat plate, about flat plate. It's not actually that easy to sing, so I kind of understand why she, she used the other lyrics, but still. Clearly a hit song and clearly a hit topic, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So a flat plate seems like a weird thing, right? You have this flat plate in the middle of nowhere. There's a flow with velocity V. Um, but actually the flat plate, the physics of flow over a flat plate apply to a lot of different surfaces and it's just related to the basic properties of a boundary layer, which we'll talk about. So this could be a hood of a car, it could be an airplane wing, it could be the, the wall of a building, um, and the physics are very similar, okay? So um, a lot of what is known about flat plates is applied to uh, a lot of engineering objects and surfaces, so keep that in mind. The, the gist of the flat plate is all about uh, shear stress and skin friction, okay? So shear stress and skin friction rule the day for an object that is streamlined like the flat plate. And um, most of the drag on a flat plate, if not all of the flat plate drag is due to skin friction. And basically this flow is going to be exerting a stress everywhere it's in contact with this plate. And you get the shear stress because you have flow stuck to the plate, not moving and then some distance away from the, from the boundary, you have the flow moving at this velocity V. And as you know, shear stress is related to velocity gradients, right? So in this case, you have some change in velocity over some thickness, and that's called the boundary layer, okay? All right, so drag on a flat plate related to skin friction. We're gonna look at it a little bit differently here and just talk about the boundary layer. So here's our plate. If we think about looking at it at that cut from the plate uh, on the side, there's really two ingredients I want to highlight here. One is the no slip condition and the other one is how that makes a boundary layer present and how that boundary layer develops, okay? So we know from our uh, from shear stress and, and viscosity that the fluid that's touching the plate is stuck to the plate. And if the plate's not moving, that means that the fluid attached to the plate has zero velocity, okay? We also know that far from the plate, uh, the fluid is moving at velocity V, and we know that even above the plate, uh, if you move far enough away, the flow is not going to be disturbed by the plate, okay? And so what that makes you get is a boundary layer, and the boundary layer is simply a region of fluid that's transitioning from that no-slip condition near the, near the plate uh, to the free stream velocity. And initially, near the leading edge of the plate, that occurs over a very, very small distance because momentum has not had time to diffuse outward very far, okay? And as you move down, downstream, you actually will uh, kind of work that out a little bit more, okay? So um, the velocity profile might look a little bit more like that, and I'm really zoomed in on this, by the way. So typically, for, you know, boundary layers that we're talking about here are often sort of like millimeter scale or, you know, centimeter scale would be a, a very thick boundary layer. Um, and then toward the, the final edge of the, of the boundary layer, maybe it would look something like that. Um, but that's the general idea, okay? And if you trace what you call the boundary layer, which is really um, delineating the zone of fluid that is impacted by the boundary, if I did this correctly, you would see that it is slowly growing with distance downstream, okay? And we call this thickness delta, typically, for the thickness of a boundary layer. That's just kind of a bit of jargon. Okay. Related to the boundary layer is that um, as you move downstream, the boundary layer may trip to be from laminar to turbulent. Okay. So um, there's an idea that if the plate is long enough, then you may have laminar boundary layer on this side and you could have turbulent on the other side. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. Okay. So the, the whole deal with shear stress and the flat plate drag is that the shear stress distribution is going to determine the drag because if you wanted to know the drag force on the plate, if you could integrate that shear stress, the wall shear stress, and think about the X component of that stress over the area of the plate, that would actually give you the drag. Literally, that's, that's where the drag comes from, right? So um, how does the shear stress look as you go downstream along the plate? Well, near the leading edge of the plate where you have a lot of velocity difference over a very tiny boundary layer thickness, you actually have a super high shear stress. So I'm gonna draw it way up here off the charts. As you move down, your boundary layer thickness is growing. So remember, we have this idea that the shear stress 
is related to maybe the velocity change, which is V minus zero, zero is the no slip condition, uh, divided by delta, and if delta is going up, then the shear stress will go down as you move down the plate. Um, so it will continue to go down, and if you transition from laminar to turbulent, it's actually gonna jump right back up, and then it will start decreasing again, and that's because turbulence always has more shear stress associated with it for the same velocity difference, okay? So the idea again is if you knew this distribution, you could integrate it and you know, you'd have to integrate it into the page as well and that would give you the drag force, okay? So these are the key ideas with the boundary layer. Um, related to this idea of laminar versus turbulent, there is a Reynolds number that we think about with flat plates related to the length of the, run of the plate in the flow direction, so that would be this dimension L. And if that is greater than about five times 10 to the fifth, then the flow will transition to, will be turbulent, okay? So um, that would help you figure out where, if anywhere, your flow might transition to be turbulent. Um, one thing I will say is that occasionally, if you have a rough leading edge here on the plate, that rough leading edge can do what we call trip the flow to be turbulent. And even if your Reynolds number was less than five times 10 to the fifth, it would be turbulent from the very beginning if you knew that there was some irregularities to that leading edge. Oftentimes in real surfaces there are. All right, flat plate drag coefficient. Okay, so um, this is where we, we look to dimensional analysis to help simplify the problem. So we have this idea that the drag force is going to be a function of our usual suspects for drag, which are density and viscosity. It's going to be a function of the size of the, of the plate, so L and B. It's going to, of course, be a function of the flow speed. And one other variable that I'll throw in here is this variable epsilon, um, which is uh, some representative uh, scale of the roughness, okay? So not all plates are smooth. Uh, a lot of even engineered surfaces have some amount of roughness, like metal or if it's an airplane wing, if there are rivets, that could be a bit of roughness. Um, but this is a pretty complete list of variables, okay? So if you actually do dimensional analysis on this, you can get that the drag coefficient for the flat plate, which is often has the subscript F just by convention, is defined as the drag force on the plate normalized by one half rho V squared, that looks familiar, and then the reference area is actually B times L, okay? And I'll get back to that in a second. That will be a function of some Reynolds number, the same one we looked at before, VL over nu. And what else? Um, there, I guess the other main one that we'll look at is epsilon over um, L. And th so these variables over here should be familiar to you. Those are the Re Reynolds number, and then this one is the relative roughness, okay? All right, so going back to this, this area here, BL. So why is it BL? I thought, I thought you told us, I'm, I'm being you, I thought you told us that the reference area for the drag coefficient was the area that the flow sees. Usually that's true. And if you, if you play the video when I said that, I said usually that's true. In this case, there's really no area that the flow sees because the flat plate is really meant to be almost like a, a knife edge, just a razor thin, okay? So, you know, an actual plate is gonna have some thickness here, but um, the official flat plate uh, does not have any thickness, and the only reference area that we could use would be the reference area of the, you know, sort of the, the surface area of the plate, which I'm coloring in here. This is your reference area, okay? So this is a clear case where the reference area, you have to pay attention to it. And you know you may be working with a surface that has some thickness here, call that T. You do not want to use that thickness in terms of your reference area, okay? So all of these coefficients are designed to be used with the plan view area. And that's simply because if it is truly a thin flat plate, that thickness doesn't mean anything as far as the drag is concerned, right? Once that thickness becomes appreciable, then you're kind of getting out of flat plate territory and you may need to find another drag coefficient, okay? So I guess if you want to think about it, probably there's something, you know, T over L has to be much, much, much less than one. That's kind of the idea here, okay? All right, so we cleared that up. Uh, this is the reference area. You'll never make that mistake. Um, 
So as Megan's saying, I'm bringing Moody back. Uh, I think she said Moody, right? Um, looks a lot like the Moody diagram here. So this is our, that functional dependence that we just described. It is the drag coefficient as a function of the Reynolds number and the relative roughness, epsilon over L, just what I told you. Okay, and it is very analogous to the Moody diagram, uh, and it looks very similar, and the physics are, are, are pretty similar as well. Um, so like the Moody diagram, you have your Reynolds number, and as you move from left to right on this diagram, you go from laminar to turbulent. Notice that if you, if you did have a, a laminar uh, flat plate, the transition does happen at about five times 10 to the fifth, which is what I told you before, right? If your flow was tripped from the beginning, then you would maybe immediately be on one of these lines here. And each one of these lines is for a particular value of relative roughness epsilon over L, okay? So this is for epsilon over L constant, okay? So the way to use this diagram, like the Moody diagram, is calculate your Reynolds number based on the total length of the, of the plate. Calculate your epsilon over L. That will tell you which of these curves you're on. Um, then you want to follow along a curve to where your Reynolds number is. Uh, let's say we are here. And then you're going to walk over and pick off your drag coefficient. And then you're going to simply apply the definition of the drag coefficient, which is, um, I guess I'll try to fit it in here, the drag force divided by 1 half rho v squared times the area of the plate where the area is bl okay all right so let's try this puppy out so example air flows at 10 meters per second that's a nice brisk wind speed over both sides of a flat board okay that's going to be important the board is 0.75 meters wide so that is meant to be this dimension here kind of the cross stream dimension and two meters long that is your l okay if the roughness of the board is, is one millimeter, uh, so I'll go ahead and write that down here, epsilon equals 10 to the minus three meters. What is the total drag force on the board? Treat the board as a flat plate, which means we're gonna ignore any thickness. You know, Maybe this wood has a thickness of an inch or a quarter inch or a half inch. We're gonna ignore that effect on this flow and assume that all of the drag is due to skin friction and that the skin friction is not affected by that small thickness. So one key thing here, as I said, both sides of a flat board, and if you paid attention to the lyrics when you were singing along with Megan Trainer, you will find that she said, every inch of you is perfect from the bottom to the top. And what she was actually talking about was the need in certain problems to account for the top side of the plate and the bottom side. So in this, in this case, we have boundary layers growing on the bottom side and on the top side, and therefore there's shear stress on the top and the bottom. One thing to know, this drag coefficient here is for one side only, okay? The good news is one side will get you two sides if you multiply it by two, okay? So you want to use this drag coefficient to get the drag force on one side of the plate. You want to assume that the drag on the underside of the plate would be the same as the top if there's no differences in the two plates. And then uh, you, you'll be gold, just like Megan. A um, couple of assumptions that I made in solving this problem. I used some reasonable values for air, for viscosity and density. And if you do what I did, and I notice I didn't say that what I did was right because I have not checked this with another engineer. And as you know, the way that things get built is that not one engineer does the calculation, but two of them do it. And then you figure out who's right and who's wrong. So. Um, if you do find an error, let me know. There's a possibility I did a, a, an error in my calculation. I arrived at this 1.2 by applying the, the drag coefficient that I got from this chart and then multiplying it by the drag force by 2. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, the Reynolds number I got was 1.3 times 10 to the 6, which kind of put me, I thought I was about here. And I will um, leave the rest to you. Okay, so... Um, it's all about flat plate, about flat plate. I, you know, the no trouble, no trouble part, I can't really get that. Uh, I can't get a good lyric out of that. But um, if you're inspired, feel free to rewrite the song uh, further. So have a great day.